Good morning, good afternoon. This is Jane Odom and welcome to Discover the New AAC Language Lab. I will be your cruise director today and we're gonna take a look at all the uh, really cool stuff that's in the lab. So let's get through some housekeeping really quick. Um, if you are trouble hearing this or connecting, um, somebody was having a problem at, at the last webinar we did and they just put headphones on and it kind of solved the problem. But if you're still having problems, the easiest thing to do is log off and log on again, or you can call the number on the screen or email um, customer service. Just so you know that this is being recorded and tomorrow you will receive a thank you email with a link to the recording. So if you um, do need to watch it, it'll be there for you or you can share it. So if you have colleagues that were unable to come live, um, you can certainly share that link and they can um, they can watch it. So you have on the right hand side of your screen um, a little panel that pops up for GoToWebinar and my dear friend and colleague Russell Cross is in the back. He's the wingman today and he will be answering any questions. So as we're going through if you have any questions, just pop it into that little question box and he'll be able to answer it. If for some reason he can't, um, we basically save them up till the very end or he can interrupt me um, if, it's a, if it's a relevant point and we will get your questions answered. So I am Jane Odom. I am the Language Lab Implementation Specialist. Basically, this is my baby and um, I am here today to, to let you know everything that's in there. I am an employee of PRC Saltillo and also a member of Isaac Uzek and ISTE. Um, let's do a little history of the language lab. How many of you have a drawer in your house somewhere? Mine's in my kitchen that I kind of dump a bunch of junk in. Um, that used to be what the lab was on the, on the PRC website. And people would create things and it would go up in the lab, but there was not really any organization and there was definitely not any quality control. And so, we were challenged with coming up with a site that was a little bit more comprehensive and based on actual research. And that's where we came up with the AAC Language Lab. So the AAC Language Lab um, has gone through a couple different versions. So last March, we released this version and it took nine months. So I actually felt like I was birthing a child, um, but we took all of the information that we had from our original site and we, Anytime somebody had a complaint or a request or a suggestion or even a compliment, I documented all of that. And when we were looking at the new site, we took all of those recommendations in to our web designers and said, let's make a new site. So we're gonna talk about all the cool things that are new on this site, all the content that's available for you and how we came up with this. So. Just so you know that the AAC Language Lab is now free for two months, but you do need to sign up. So there is a little video right here on the homepage that kind of shows you how to do that and how to sign up for your free account. And we are doing this in response to the COVID-19 craziness that is, that is going on. And we want to make sure that if you're doing teletherapy or you're teleteaching or you're a mom at home with the kids, <laughs> you're now doing a bit of homeschooling, that we make sure that we don't forget that our students need to practice using their AAC devices. And you guys, honestly, in the last month or so, I have had some really wonderful stories that have come out of this. And, you know, it's a, it's a crisis and everybody was thinking, how are we going to do this? But there's a lot of kids that are doing some really, really great things. So hang in there and, and uh, keep at it. Um, and hopefully the language lab will provide you with a lot of activities that you can use when you're doing teletherapy, okay? So also on the homepage, we just have a little overview of what the language lab is. And then at the bottom here, we show you what is new. So we just added a new lesson plan called We Are Home. And this is to kind of address the COVID-19 crisis that's going on right now. And maybe some of our students are wondering, why can't I go to school? Why can't I see my friends? And so we give you a lot of different activities and uh, fun things that you can do with the child, as well as a book that kind of tries to explain um, some of the, the questions that they may have about what's going on now. And then we also show you what our latest activity is. And I'll talk about the difference between lesson plans and activities in a little bit, but this was just added today. And it's a writing template um, based on a time capsule. So what is going on right now? And then what are you gonna, where do you see 
things 10 years from now. And it gives the, the kids a nice creative outlet. So always on the homepage, whatever is brand new is going to show up here. And then we always have blogs. So we have blogs that go up twice a week. And today's blog was written by Chris, who I think is out of Chicagoland somewhere. And he talks about his AAC journey. So he's an actual device user and he's talking about what he's done. So we'll show you that in a little bit. And then every month we show you what is most popular. What are other people downloading? Because that might be, you know, that might be fun to kind of see something that, that is popular. That means that it's being used because it works. So you can check out uh, that at the bottom of the page here. Most importantly is contact us. So if you have a suggestion, if you have a question, if you need to reach out to me, this contact us button will um, send an email to my team and we make sure that those get answered or replied to as quickly as possible. You have over here on the right-hand side, normally the AAC Language Lab is a subscription that you would purchase. It is $20 for the whole entire year. So that is less than one Starbucks coffee um, a month <laughs> so, to give you access to everything. And we lower the price because we want um, our schools to be able to have access to it. All right. Um, we also have a free Realize language account that you can activate for two months for collecting data. So if you have never played with Realize language, I highly recommend that you go to this site and you check it out, watch the video on the home screen, and then attend one of Russell's webinars, which is what we just did this morning with a, we had an enormous amount of people there asking really, really good questions. But if you um, want to see what is free on the lab, you can click on any of these buttons here so that once we are back to normal and it is a subscription, the, there is free content. We don't offer necessarily a free 30-day trial, but we offer you free lessons and free activities and free resources for you to try before you buy. All right. And then there's a little thing here on our smart charts. And I will show you how to generate smart charts within each lesson plan, but we've changed these. Um, and this was a request from the other site. We now use high resolution graphics. These icons look amazing. And we've added Saltillo and word power graphics. So you can get smart charts for Saltillo using PCS symbols or Saltillo using symbol sticks. Pretty cool. And up here at the top, we have different ways to navigate the site. Over on the right is going to be the search feature for the whole entire site. So that was one of the suggestions at the old site was finding things was a little tough. So we have added a variety of different ways to search for things on the site. So this is just one of them. So if you want to do a site-wide search, you would click here and you can search lesson plans and activities and resources. And you just put what you're looking for here and that will that will um, search the whole entire site. We've also added getting started. So the getting started section, this was a request from the old site. People were like, I don't know where to begin. This is overwhelming. My student just got an AAC device. I've never worked with one of these before. I don't know what to do. And so the getting started section is here to help you. It talks about using the lab. It talks about a free set of lesson plans that we'll look at in a minute called the core word starter set. These are nine lesson plans that you can utilize when a student either first gets their device or maybe they're doing a device trial, but it's based on the top 20 words that research has determined that student need, they need to work on first. So not only do you have the free lesson plans, but you have data collection sheets that you can click on. And these sheets um, will kind of keep track of what words have been used and then how they're using those words. So what language functions are those students using? All right. So the core word starter set of lesson plans is a great place to get started. We also have information on the different language stages. So this whole entire site is based on Brown stages of language development. And um, I'm, a, I'm probably 30 years out of college, so um, it's been a while since I studied Brown, but that's why we have his information on the site. So you can download the different charts and you can see how we organized everything on the site. So Brown technically has five stages. And what we did was we took that first stage and we divided it into two sections. So stage one is using single words. And that's where the student is going to basically learn where things are on their device. And then you could jump to stage two as quickly as you need to um, where they start combining those words. So some students will jump right into stage two, others may need a little bit more time, um, but we do have enough content in both of those stages 
that will keep you busy for a very long time. Um, we have a language screener, which we're gonna go through in a minute. And then this is information on the new search engine. So if you forget what you learned today, you can come in and watch this little video, all right? But we're gonna jump right in to this language screener. And this language screener was shared with me by a school district. I live in Arizona and I was in a class and the student, I was going to support a student that had just gotten his communication device and they were handing out this little one sheet page asking people to check off where they thought that student was what what skills did they already have and what did they need to learn and so we took that language screener which this district litchfield school district graciously shared and we made it into this little widget so you have a couple options you can print the printed version and check it's a, basically a checklist or we can do the language screener wizard what was really interesting was we gave that um, checklist to everybody that worked with that child and 99% of them came back exactly the same. You know, they all agreed where that student was, where they needed to start. But what was really interesting was they could also see what the, what the sequence of objectives were so they could see what you were going to be working on next. So we are going to go through this widget. We're going to do my dog Zeus, and you may hear him in the background. Um, I do work from home and if the FedEx guy comes, Zeus likes to say hello, <laughs> so you may hear him barking. Um, right now he's downstairs, so hopefully he'll stay down there. But you can check off where do you think that that dog or you know that that child is, my dog. Where, where what does he do? And so we ch have this checklist, and we go through and we read these different language objectives. And you know what? He doesn't put two words together. He only has one word, which is woof. All right. When we get to the point where I hit all nevers and I choose next, it'll say, do you wanna keep going or do you wanna finish? So if I have a student that just got a device, I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna finish right there, but maybe I have a student that is getting a different device. So they've been on one system, they're getting a new system. They may have splinter skills based on what they've learned in the past. And so you may go through the whole entire screener and fill in those gaps, all right? because that's going to help you determine you know what you can what you need to work on and what you what the student has already mastered so when i click finish a couple things happen first of all it shows me exactly on the lab where to start so this is the language objective that i need to start in and the other site was kind of like had a lot of text on it and so what we tried to do i told my web guys i'm like i want it to look like pinterest i want it to have these tiles and you can mouse over the tile and get a, like a little description of what the lesson plan is. But visually, it's a lot easier to kind of navigate through the lesson plans now because we have it set up this way. The other thing that you can do is I can download that screener now. So I have now a PDF file that I can utilize that keeps track of where that student is starting. And I may periodically do this every month or so and be able to show progress throughout the school year. All right, so these are PDFs, so you can kind of save these on your computer, you can share these, you can print these, but now you have um, a summary of where that student is, but you can also see all the different language objectives and what order that you would work on those. All right, so let's take a look at a lesson plan. So it should, and I look at this, I can hit show more, and there's all kinds of lesson plans that are going to be for each language objective. So however long you need to be on an objective, that's fine. So let's look at the clumsy monkey. This was actually the most popular one last month. And our lesson plans are all set up the same. Okay, so we have goals for speaking, we have reading, we have writing, and then we have extension activities, which are sometimes games, okay? So when you open up a, a lesson plan, you're gonna see that there is a language objective. So this shows you exactly what we're working on, and you can actually utilize these in an IEP or in a lesson plan. It tells you what materials you need, and it tells you your target vocabulary words, okay? So the target vocabulary words are, are available. They get dumped into this smart chart so you can have a visual representation of where those words are depending on what system you are using all right so if i click on smart charts it says what language system am i using i can say well i'm using unity and my student is on 60 sequenced 
and I can download this smart chart. And basically it's gonna give me a PDF file that shows where those icon sequences are. So I could give this to the student or I could share it with mom and dad at home. I could share it with the teacher. I could share it with um, any of the classroom assistants so that they know where those words are so that they can model. And these are all now like really nice graphics. They're high resolution, they look really good. And just to let you know, we built a database basically in the back of the lab to generate all these. And it is 30 days of my life that I will never get back. <laughs> as we loaded it up icon by icon. But as you can see, if you're supporting somebody that's using Saltillo, I can come in here and these are all the different language levels. So maybe my student is on 60 basic. When I open that up, it's gonna give me that high, those high resolution graphics for where to find those words, okay? So smart charts are available for every lesson plan and those are based on the target vocabulary words. You also have a realized language tip. So if you are keeping data, and I think now that a lot of us are doing teletherapy and teleteaching, this data is a little bit more important now than it ever was. And so turning that data on on the student's device, and it can be a PRC or a Saltillo device, and it can be a dedicated device or an app, um, and you can actually keep track of what you're teaching, and then you can use that data to determine whether it was effective whether the student actually understood that and are using those words. So you can track all of that using realized language. Pretty cool stuff, all right? So we can download all of the documents. So this is everything that goes with that lesson plan all at once. So it'll give us a little zip file. All of the documents are PDF, which means you can see them on a computer or whether it's Mac or PC. They can be used on a tablet. They can be used on your phone. All of this is a very accessible site. Um, so that way I also I can print that lesson plan. So now if I don't want to carry my laptop with me, but I wanna have that lesson plan like on my phone or on my tablet, I can have this PDF file that's gonna give me that whole entire lesson plan if I need to reference it, all right? So I just hit print lesson plan to do that. All right, so my speaking activities, you're gonna see that I can show less or show more. And then uh, this one comes with a game called get your game on. So you're talking about things, whether they are on or off. And so there are three different variations of this game. So one is generic, one is made with symbol sticks and one is made with unity symbols. So depending on what device you're supporting, um, if you want to have one that matches the device, we try to give you variations of the game. Each lesson plan comes with a fun, um, a fun book. And these are again, all PDF files. So you can read the book with the child. It gives you instructions on exactly how to do that. And then oftentimes we have a writing template. So we'll have like, sometimes we have a writing game, but if there is a template, the templates are all interactive PDF files. So basically these are fillable text boxes that um, I can either write in, I can type in on my computer, or if you have computer emulation capabilities on your AAC device, you can plug that device into the computer and the student can write using their icon sequences. So that's kind of cool, right? So we've tried to make sure that all of the PDF files are interactive um, and they have these fillable text boxes. If you're using an, um, an iPad app, and you don't have that capability, that's fine. Just write it in. You can print that out and write that in. I will tell you, um, this site is device neutral. So it's just words. So it doesn't matter what system you're using, whether it's a PRC or a Saltillo device, or if you're using another company's device, um, all of the lesson plans are, again, just working on words. So you should be able to utilize this site um, with, with any student on any system. In fact, we sometimes have, um, English as second language teachers that use this site to help their students learn English. And then at the bottom, we will have an extension activity. This may be a game or this may be, you know, some type of interactive activity. Sometimes there's links to videos um, and that will be all the gamey stuff will be in the extension section. But at the very top here, we have a flip book. So you can take the book that is in the reading section and you can download the flip book and this is gonna give you kind of like it's animated and the page swishes when, it, like it makes a swishing noise when the page turns. And so it's just a way to kind of read a book with a child that's a little bit more fun. Oh, I, I, oh, I hit to the end. So you can, kind of, whoops, here we go. You can see. And so the student might enjoy that. So we just gave you that option, 
right? It's all about options, right? Then at the bottom of each lesson plan, this was a suggestion. People were like, I don't know where to go and what order to do things in. So what we've done is we've given you these guided lessons at the bottom. So first of all, we give you a homework plan. So the homework card can be sent home, all right? Um, Oftentimes, devices may not get used at home. I know as a mom, when my kids were little, it was crazy. I mean, everything was really, really busy and there was all kinds of things going on. And so, it, you know, you, you, I, we understand that moms are really busy, but what we're asking is that families take 10 to 15 minutes a night and do something to support what the teacher and the therapist are trying to do at school. So we have picked little activities that take no more than 10 or 15 minutes to encourage mom and dad pull that device out of the book bag, hey, plug it in so that it's charged for the next day of school, that would be kind of cool. And then you can do these simple activities at home, reinforcing what you're working on at school. So feel free to print these out, share these with the parents, you can email them to them so that the student is working on the same objectives at home that they are at school. And then we tell you, all right, does Johnny need a little bit more practice? This would be a link to the next lesson in that language objective, or if that student is ready to move forward, this will take you to the next section or the next language objective. So you can kind of keep, keep, like stay in one language objective for a really long time, depending on the student, or you can move throughout different language objectives. And then at the bottom, if you are a state here in the US that's using the Common Core Standards, then these are going to give you the, the standard for this lesson plan. Again, 30 days of my life that I will never get back, <laughs> putting all that together, all right? So those are your lesson plans. And when I go into lesson plans and I need to look at all of them, you're gonna see, look, it looks like really visually appeal appealing. So you've got a little picture here that shows you the lesson plan and you can see here we have the different language objectives. So we're gonna start using single words and then we're gonna add more words and we're gonna direct actions and we're gonna express negatives. And there's arrows here at the side when there are more lessons to look at, okay? The core word starter set can be accessed under getting started. I can come here to get to those free lesson plans to start with, or I can access them here at Core Word Starter Set. And so when I click on that, it's gonna take me to these lesson plans to look at, all right? Also, if I'm looking at different stages, I have this bar here at the top that takes me through these different stages. And they show me all the lesson plans for those different stages, all right? So I'll go to stage three. I can see that there's a lot more language objectives negatives and directing actions and ongoing actions and prepositions. So there's all kinds of things, all right? But we have a new way to search for things. So you can search for lesson plans that have books and games that are in Spanish. So when I click on Spanish, it's gonna show me, that, oh, same and different has something in Spanish. And so when I come here, you can see this little yellow tag says, oh, they have memory cards in Spanish. All right, so I can use, that's called a filter. I can use that filter. Or we have um, books that are, and games that are for young adults, which means that a lot of them are juvenile, like a lot of our books and games maybe look juvenile. They have like these little cartoony characters. So when I want to do this activity, you can see here that this has a young adult version, which is going to be more age appropriate graphics. So we might use photographs or line drawings that are more age appropriate so they're not so um, juvenile, all right? So we can search for that. Also, we can search for lesson plans. I'm gonna clear this one. We can search for mobile lesson plans. So these are lesson plans based on apps. Now, these are not apps for the children to play with, these are apps for you to use as a therapist to generate language. So if Johnny is using um, touch chat app on an iPad, he would be interacting with your iPad playing this app. And so there's all kinds of really fun games that you can, you guys, if you haven't played balloon animals, oh my gosh, this is, I think it's like $1.99 for this app. It is so much fun. You like swipe on the screen and you make balloon animals and you'll just crack up. The kid will love it. I promise you. <laughs> Um, our other filter that we have, um, our friends in the UK, 
So we have our site on the UK server as well. So if you are joining us from the UK, um, it's not going to be languagelab.com. It's going to be languagelab.co.uk because you're on a different server, but it's the same content. And so when we go into a lesson plan and things needed to be anglicized because spelling might be a little bit differently or you're talking about mom and, you know, in the UK, we're going to call her mom. So these are going to be UK versions of things. And so our friends at Liberator in the UK did all of the, the they kind of went through everything and found the ones that needed to be to be fixed. All right. And then I can also search for target vocabulary. So maybe I want to work on the word more. And oops, if I spell it right, it'll be much better, right? <laughs> so I'll work, look for the word more, and it's going to show me all of these lesson plans are going to address the word more. All right. Or if I look, let's try a different one. There we go. So these it changes and it only shows me lesson plans that have the target vocabulary word more. Or I can search for concepts. So maybe we're working on shapes. So I can search for shapes and it's going to show me the lesson plans that work on that concept. All right, so those are your search engines in your lesson plans. All right, moving on. Another thing that I determined was that sometimes I want a full lesson plan, but other times I want to have a quick activity that I can do like with just a group of kids or a single child or a whole classroom. And I need something that we can play at the end of the day that's going to get them ex excited and engaged and using their system. All right. So what we have is we have an activity section and this section is going to be single games. So these are not going to be full lesson plans. So we're going to go into one of my favorites, SWAT the word. And you're going to see it's, it's very simple. OK, so again, we can download this material. We can print this activity if we want to have it on our iPad to reference or our phone. If you're going to have a language objective, your target vocabulary. So you can see that this one has a lot of target vocabulary words. So when I generate this smart chart, there's going to be a lot more words on here. And here we go. And it's generating. There we go. And you can see all the different icon sequences that I would need to know for this game. All right. So this game is one of my favorites because actually the, this is under um, stage one here, but this can also be done as an all levels um, activity. And I'll show you how to, to find those. All right, but basically this is a, you're gonna get a fly swatter. So uh, I got mine at the wall of the Mart and I bought a two pack for 99 cents or you can go to the dollar store. So this is not <laughs> expensive. But you put Velcro on the fly swatter and you print out and Velcro these little bugs that come with the game. And the student basically gets to whack a bug with the fly swatter and then find that word on their device. And oh my gosh, because we're doing something silly with a fly swatter, we played this game and these kids were engaged for like 45 minutes. Their IEP says, oh, they will engage in an activity for five to 10 minutes. Oh. No, you give them something fun to do. We played for 45 minutes and they did not want to stop. So this is like just a really fun game. Okay. Um, but what if I'm working with kids on at different levels? So you take this same basic game and we can modify it based on active, like whatever that student is working on. So maybe Kim is finding single words and maybe Kevin is using those words in a phrase and maybe St Steven is finding those words and using them in a sentence so you can vary the outcomes. And I guarantee when we played this game with four different kids using different devices, doing different language systems, they didn't know that they had different things that they needed to find. They just knew that they were having fun, all right? So activities are divided up by stages. So you can see here, we can go into the different stages, but we also have an all levels category. And the all levels category are going to be these open-ended games that you can change and use a variety of different ways. And we call that repetition with variety. So for example, here's Monster Mouth. This is one of, again, another one of my go-to favorites because it is just so much fun. The kids love it. We get some uh, brown bags and you can either get one big lawn and garden bag or a couple um, of grocery bags and put them together, cut a big hole out for a mouth and then decorate it with eyes and teeth or whatever you want to put on it. And then the student can, you just take scratch paper and you write what they need to find on their device and you have a stack for each student and they pick up their, their paper, they find 
and do what they're supposed to do. They, and if they get it right, they get to crumple it up and throw it into the bag. And oh my gosh, they think that this is like so much fun. And what's nice is again, you can modify this a variety of different ways. So when we were playing this, I was playing this with like fifth and sixth graders. Um, so, you know, 11 and 12 year olds, and they were just having so much fun. And, and when I came back like a couple weeks later, the classroom assistants had gotten a hold of the monster and then gave it lipstick and they <laughs> totally put glitter all over it and they totally decorated it. So they did that repetition, repetition with variety and played this game a variety of different ways. And they would bring it out at math time. And if the student got their math fact correct, they could throw it in the mouth. They brought it out at spelling. And if the student spelled their word correctly, they got to throw it in the mouth. So they used this one single game all throughout the school year. How much did this cost? Absolutely nothing. I mean, it's like, I mean, some pipe cleaners and some googly eyes, but um, they had so much fun playing this game. So these activities are meant to be engaging. I'm like a big kid myself. And so I'm trying to find things that are gonna be really, really fun for all kids at all levels. Also in the all levels section, we have um, a lot of these interactive writing templates that are in here as well as some some poetry templates, okay? And so a poetry template, people, like the first time we were doing poetry, I was working with um, a therapist named Dr. Caroline Musselwhite and Deanna Wagner. And they're like, we're gonna do a, ther uh, we're gonna do a poetry camp. And I'm like, are you crazy? Because I was thinking kind of like Emily Dickinson and Robert Frost. Well, no, I mean, think of Dr. Seuss or Sh Shel Silverstein. Like poetry can be anything and it can be very, very simple. And so what we did was we would pick these templates and what's nice is they're open-ended. So the student, I mean, poetry isn't right or wrong. It's just an expression. So they can write about whatever they want to write about. So you have an I like poem. All it is is I like blank, I like blank, I like blank, I don't like blank. So you can write about anything. So um, you might change it for Father's Day to dad is blank, dad is not, or we are, or you can try all these different pronoun phrases. You can do this a gazillion different ways based on your creativity. And this can be used to teach sentence structure. You can use this to teach um, all different describing words. You can use this to teach emotions. You can use this to teach verbs. You can use this a variety of different ways, okay? You can also like throw in some punctuation there if you want. So a lot of the activities, um, and there's a ton of poetry templates on there. So I actually should do it just a training on poetry because I love it so much, all right? But we have some filters here that make it easier for you to find things. So if I click on filters, I can search for specific things. So maybe I'm looking for a writing template or maybe I'm looking for an arts and craft activity or a cooking activity or something for reading or science. Maybe I'm looking for a specific age level or something for a holiday. So we just had Easter. And so you can kind of come in here and see where all the Easter activities are. I can also search for target vocabulary. I can also search for keywords, all right? Okay, we're gonna keep on moving, my friends. So on to curriculums. So we have some supports. So if you are here in the United States, um, if you are using news to you at your school, when I click on news to you, we have supports that go up every week for the different news to you newspapers. So news to you is a weekly newspaper that comes out usually on excuse me, something to do with current events. And so actually last month was the first, last week was the first week that all of the words were in Unity and Words for Life. So this is gonna be specific for the PRC devices, okay? But I didn't need to create any type of external thing with fringe vocabulary because all the words were core vocabulary. I was so excited. Um, but generally, you will get a smart chart with all of the, where to find all of the core vocabulary words. And then you can get an MTI file that would load into an activity row that will give you what I call words from heaven. So those are the words that you need for that week. And then you're probably not gonna need them again. So they get replaced the following week with the next set of words. All right, if you are using an app, we give you the smart charts and then a manual communication board that you can have on the side of that iPad with those words from heaven to utilize for that week. Um, and then you don't have to worry about programming it into the device. If you are using Saltillo, there is a link here to where to find the Saltillo supports. All right, and if you need help, here's a re um, link on the resource section of how to get some help for that, okay? If you are using unique learning in the schools, um, 
we have smart charts for you for the words that you're going to need that month for whatever um, your topic is. And these are divided up by bands. So if you're elementary, intermediate, middle, high school, um, or, or transition, and you can come in here and find whatever level that you are on. All right. Also, we have one of our best kept secrets, Literacy Through Unity. And this is a literacy program that was developed by Dr. Karen Erickson and Dr. Gretchen Hanser from the Center for Literacy and Disabilities. These guys are brilliant. And if you've ever seen them present at a conference, you will go, you just go away like mind blown. They are so incredibly smart. So there's a little video here that kind of talks about it. And then we used to have this as a binder that you would purchase for like $99. And it's now free with your subscription in the Language Lab. Wow, what a bargain, right? And so you can come in here and we have it now started as a course. So when I go to click the course, it's going to tell me like what it is. It shows me these lesson plans, what they look like. There are three components. You have word wall lessons. You have making words with icon lessons. And then you have making words with letter lessons. So there are 50 lessons for each one of those components. They are fabulous because they are all scripted out. So they tell you exactly what to say. And when the student gets through 150 lessons, not only will they know their core vocabulary on their system, but they will be ready to enter into any standard reading program, whatever's at your school. Now, this is for Unity. So this is for Words for Life, Unity 84, or Unity Sequenced. But hey, I'm using a different device. I'm using Word Power or I'm using Prolo Quo. That's okay. The making words with letters and the word wall lessons can be done with any system. So just you utilize those. And as a matter of fact, I am currently working on a Word Power version of this, which will have all of those. Um, there'll be 75 of each one of those lessons that you can use. And that I'm hoping for the end of the month. But if click on how do I use it over here on the left. It's going to show you this is what the word wall would look like how do i do it and kind of gives you some steps and then guess what it gives you a video of how to implement that lesson plan and the same with making words with icons so you get to see what it looks like you get to see how to do it and then watch a video and then the same with making words with letters right so again that used to be 99 dollars, and you get it free with your subscription pretty cool and then also, I went to Temple University in Philadelphia. Um, I was blessed because I got to work um, under, learn from Dr. Amy Goldman and Dr. Diane Bryan. And one of the programs that's still going on at Temple is a two week seminar for adults that use communication called ACEs. And I got to be the communications instructor for nine years for that program. But that program is very exclusive. It's two weeks at Temple University and they only take like 15 clients. And we wanted to bring that to the masses and we wanted to make it more accessible for high school students and for maybe adults. So we modified sort of what they did and we brought it here to Phoenix and we went to a, an adult day program. So there were, they serve like 200 adults that are on um, you know, different levels of employment and there were 15 device users at that program. And we said, you know what, let's do ACEs with them. And so what we did was we shortened it and we divided it up into individual lessons. And we, what was really cool was when we were finished, the job coach took all of the, what the students did as their work and incorporated into their individual education plans and in, into their ISPs, into their service plans. So this is what we did. We, first of all, we have a getting started section to help you train staff. So these are workers that maybe have never seen an AAC device before. And so, they um, were not really good communication partners. And we talked about what is AAC, what were the myths, and how can you be a good communication partner? And our, our guys were amazing. Our communication partners, once they got going, were brilliant. And then the next important thing is for that person to determine who are they. How often do we ask our kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? We don't always ask that to, to a student using AAC. And so we make sure that like, hey, what's important to you? Who are you? What do you enjoy? So this um, client right here uses eye gaze and she said, I wanna feed the homeless. We were like, what? So that was her dream was to feed the homeless. So what we did was we created dream boards for each one of the clients. And so a dare to dream board is just a simple poster 
where you draw out what their dream is, where they're going to live, what who's going to help them, and what those goals are. For So for the client that wanted to feed the hungry, she was basically a quad um, using eye gaze, didn't have a lot of movement at all, but she we told her we taught her how to use the internet and guess what you can create menus and you can create shopping lists and so when we have events at the adult day program you're going to be in charge of planning a meal and so her first meal she planned for one of our meetings was indian fry bread she's a um, native american she's navajo and so she went online and found a recipe for a fry bread she found all the ingredients that we needed and we created a shopping list and then they went out and did all the shopping and so she was able to fulfill her dream and work on th something that was meaningful for her so guess what she was a better communicator because she was doing something that meant something to her this is norelli's and um, Norelli was, is a high school student that is using her device and she wanted to help other kids. She wanted to help the little kids learn to use their device. So she, she came up with this word, I want to be a speecher. And we're like, of course you do, that's fabulous. And so we said, all right, what do you need to do? You need to learn to read. You need to learn your device inside and out so that you can show others and model for others. And we gave her a whole list of things that she needed to be able to do. All right. so. The BRICS curriculum not only deals with like individuals' dreams, but then some social skills. So most of my adults communicate with me via social media or texting. I don't get phone calls anymore. Somebody's sending me a Facebook message, they're FaceTiming me, they're sending me a text. And so we talk about that. We talk about internet safety. We talk about how to program things on your device. We talk about how to email. And then we also have an empowerment section where we talk about like, how do you talk to your personal attendant? Um, how do you have personal safety? Hey, guess what? It's an election year. You're over 18, you can register to vote and you can have your vote count. And we had the voting commission come in and actually talk to the clients and get them all registered. All right, so that is our BRICS curriculum. Um, for this one, this is living, breathing, growing entity. So if you are doing this and you have suggestions, again, contact us here at the end, at the bottom of each page, let us know how you're doing and um, where you're going with that because we would love to hear from you. All right, Whew, we're keeping going. We have resource section now. Some of these resources are going to be universal and then some of them are going to be specific to PRC Saltillo just because this is a really nice place to have everything in one spot. <clears throat> so we have these organized um, by different contact areas. So we have evaluations, therapy materials, language charts, okay? But we also have filters. So these are gonna be different filters. Again, a, another way to search for things, you can search by age, language system, and there is a generic one right here, target audience, as well as different topics. So let's look at our different sections. So we have evaluation tools. So we this one we just added today, and this one is awesome. So this one, you look at the behavior of a student when they're having a bad behavior to determine like, all right, was this a an attempt at communication that we just missed? And so it's a nice little chart that you can kind of document um, what that student is trying to communicate to us. It's fabulous. Um, and so also in the evaluation section, we are going to have maybe rate yourself modeling. We have an interest inventory so you know what the student likes so that you can kind of like gear therapy and education towards something that's high interest for them, which might be really helpful for teletherapy. Um, how to write effective IEP goals. This is by Lauren Enders, a great article. We have the quad profile by our, by our own Russell Cross. Um, the ACE Center in the UK sent us their pragmatic profile to use. All right, so there's a lot of really good tips and things that you can use when you're doing evaluations. We have therapy materials that are available and some of these are going to be generic and some of these are going to be a little bit more specific but we have a home implementation guide. Oh you guys this is fabulous. Now this is geared for Unity but um, you can take some of the activities out of here and use it with any device. We have the literacy planner that was sponsored by PRC which is like a different book to use each month as well as the Saltillo calendar. So there's just all kinds of really fun, engaging things. So here's Project Core, all really kind of fun, engaging things that you can utilize. Here's Explore AAC. If you have never been to this site and you're just starting out on your AAC journey, this is gonna be really good information, as well as these parent guides, which um, you can share with your parents that you're working with. Fabulous stuff. 
The site, again, is based on Brown stages. So we have all of these language charts. I have these printed out and hung in my office so I can reference them all the time. Really, really good stuff. We have manual communication boards. You should always have a backup system because guess what? Things don't get charged, things break, um, kids forget things. So you always have a backup system so they have some way to communicate. And we have all of these boards that are free here that you can utilize. In fact, just last, just last week, I got, um, I got a, an email from a therapist in Greece. And she's like, I really need to have something for communication in Greek. And I was like, all right, well, let's do it. So we created this manual board. And it, you can see this is all in Greek. So uh, we're helping people all over the world. It's kind of cool. Um, but we have all of the different language we have all the different language systems represented with these different boards. So whether you're using Unity or Words for Life or Saltillo, um, we actually have the uh, what you need, the schematics to build one of those big playground boards, all right? Or the poster size one that you can have in the classroom. Oh, here's one in Arabic. There you go. We need that one too, all right? Um, if you are using data logging and you um, are looking at realized language, we have a lot of the tips that you can use to help you get started on your journey with data collection. If you have never played with this before, I highly recommend it. It is really cool. It's really, really fun to do. And then we have word lists, vocabulary resources. Um, so we have the icon rationale chart. So if you look at Unity and you're like, why are all these crazy pictures on there? This kind of explains about that. So there's all kinds of information here for you to use. So a year of words is here. Gail Van Tatenhove's vocabulary lists are listed here. Um, we have alphabet sorts, all kinds of good information. All right, moving forward. One of my favorite sections of the lab, which is always free, are our blogs. And our blogs are written by, some of them are written by AAC device users. So this is today's blog. And here is Chris, and Chris lives in Chicagoland, and he is writing about all the different technology that he used. And we all need a picture of us with a bird on our head, right? Um, and then we also have blogs that are written by, by some of our staff. And then we have blogs that are written by, again, Communicators in Action is gonna be all these different device users, just writing all kinds of really cool things. And some of them might be like political, some of them might be really intense, and then some of them might be really, really simple. So it just depends on you know, who, who they are. And then we have stories and strategies, which are um, written by our, our consultants all across the world. So here is uh, Kelly and she is in Australia and she's talking about her first week doing telehealth and like the good, the bad and the ugly, everything that worked and everything that didn't. So fabulous stuff. And then uh, life with Kyle. So Kyle writes for me on most Fridays and he is fabulous. So he's out of Missouri and he writes about all kinds of crazy topics, not just about AAC. And so you're gonna wanna follow him. Oh, how do you follow him? You just click right here. And this is, uh, we'll give you, you can sign up and you'll get in your inbox um, when a new blog is posted. All right, so you can kind of come back in here and look at all these different ones. We have archived them since 2013. So there's a lot of good information here. And it's really fun to kind of share this with your students and maybe with parents. Maybe they've never met um, somebody that's in college that's using a device. So guess what you can do? Under blogs, boom, go here to ambassadors. Our ambassador section are some really amazing, unique, fabulous AAC device users. So we pretty much have all ages represented here, all different devices, all different access methods. And so when you click on one of our ambassadors, you will get a little overview. They, each, these are all written by them, okay? So Chris wrote all about himself. So Chris talked about going to college and getting married and the different devices that he's used. And then there's actually a video here of Chris um, talking about himself, and you can see how he's utilizing his device. So we have this closed caption for you, and then you can actually see that Chris uses his foot to type on his device. He is brilliant, and he is fabulous, and just if you ever get to meet him, he is like totally friendly and will answer all your questions. But if you want to leave a message down at the bottom here, you can type your name and email and just shoot him out a message. Um, and maybe you know start a conversation with him. All right, so we have all of these different ambassadors. If you have a student that 
might be interested in becoming an ambassador here at the very, very bottom, you can shoot me an email and tell me who that student is and why they want to become an ambassador. I will tell you, unfortunately, right now with COVID going on, um, we aren't really actively paying our ambassadors for anything because nobody's traveling right now. Um, so the, the program's put on hold, but they can certainly still apply. And when things open back up again, um, we will reach out to them and tell them the different opportunities that they have. All right, my friends, that is the AAC Language Lab. Um, oh, wait, 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 I gotta tell you, show you some things. So first of all, if you have not joined, if you're on Facebook and you have not joined the AAC Language Lab Facebook page, um, this is a great place. I get here, look, that's me. I get on um, once a week to do a Facebook Live post and talk about something that's on the lab. To, to, so today I talked about that time capsule um, template and computer emulation. And then this is also a place where you can post questions. All right. And we post when the blogs go up. So anything new that's on the at language lab. And so you just need to um, ask to join this and then answer that one simple question and you will be on the language lab. Also, we now have a language lab YouTube channel that you can subscribe to. And this is only like a couple of weeks old, but I was doing daily tips in the month of, month of April and putting these little videos up, highlighting stuff from the lab. And so these are all like, you know, two, three minute tips and you can watch all the different tips and share these. And, and also, also all of the Facebook live um, that I was doing is also on the AAC Language Lab channel. And then finally, if you are a lesson pick user, all of our icons, so if you wanna use lesson picks to create materials, all of our icons are available in lesson picks. And what you would do is when you go into your profile, so I go into my Jane profile, oops, I gotta sign in. When I go into my Jane profile and I edit, I can turn on, all I need to do is go here to Unity and make sure that those are showing and I will have access. So if I wanna create materials myself, I mean, you can certainly use everything that's on the language lab, but if you want to make something yourself, you can utilize lesson picks, which is $36 a year. So what a bargain, but thank you so much, you guys for attending. Um, Russell, if you want to pop on, if there's any questions, um, if you want to share this with a friend, you will get an email tomorrow that has a link to the recording. And then this link right here, if you want to watch this, if you want to come again next month, um, you can join us right here. This will always be, you know, whatever the next tour is going to be. Okay, I got uh, three questions for you. So here we go. Uh, okay, how are your supports for unique and news to you different from those on the Saltillo website? So the Saltillo website, I believe, utilizes, they create pages for the different vocabulary. And what we want to do is get the students to practice their vocabulary on their device. Like they shouldn't have to, like, they shouldn't have to use two different paths to get anywhere. I don't know if they have changed theirs or not, but it used to be that you would load a page up for um, your, your, your word power, depending on how many um, how many buttons were on your screen. But what we do is we give you smart charts for those core words. And then for the words that aren't in Unity or aren't in Words for Life, we're gonna provide you either the activity row or that manual communication board that you can use. And again, I call those words from heaven because you don't always need them um, to be something permanent on the student's device because it's very topical. So they change every week. And then Unique, I'm not for sure what Saltillo does with Unique. Um, I would assume that they also um, might do those those pages where we instead do the smart charts and we also give you target vocabulary for that month so we will pick about six to eight words that are going to be really really useful that for that student to focus on that month to be able to talk about the topic for that month okay uh second question um do you know if there is a way to use your ipad or computer emulation and no the... yeah not 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 at this point in time okay uh i i, I did a little googling and it looked like there might be some software solutions but i have not tried them so uh this is one of those uh, uh i'll tell you what if you figure that out my friend whoever asked that question and you figure like you come up with a way to do that if you want to use that contact us button and send me what you did i will be more than happy to share it in the future but as of right now i didn't know that there was any way to do it 
Okay, but uh, that's from Marie, so the onus is on. All right, Marie, I'm holding you to it, my friend. <laughs> to wow it with that one. And, uh, uh, it's a good question. It's a good question. Um, and then uh, uh, another question here. I completely see the benefits of districts purchasing this tool for teachers as it's amazing. How have you handled sharing things with parents and families? And do you have them purchase their own subscriptions or can we share materials with parents? So absolutely you can share. And now like a lot of parents like to get on here. I mean, it's only $20. So a lot of them want to have their own subscriptions so they can get things when they want them. But like those homework cards, they're meant to be shared with parents. And, it, and then you're gonna notice in some of those homework cards, it may say, hey, read the story with your students. So yeah, absolutely share that file with that mom. So we, our, our main goal is to get these kids talking. We want them to be confident. We want them to be great communicators. Um, we would prefer that you not share with your colleagues. We would ask that each person that's using the lab to get materials um, th that's professional have their own account but certainly, um, you know, help those kiddos. And if that means sharing a game with, with mom, that's fine. And one more question here. Um, are the words in Literacy Through Unity from a specific list? So Karen determined that I'm pretty much sh um, sure from the Dolch word list or the, um, what's the other one, Fries. So they looked at the um, liter Literacy words and then they also looked at the high frequency word list for the students need for communication so it was a combination of all of those oh and just to let you know being that um you asked the, the thing about sharing materials anytime a, a student gets a new device in the box there is a code for a free language lab subscription for the parent to use or the parent can share that and how many codes i mean don't they get one for realize as well russell or two uh yes so they, they have that in their box. So make sure mom doesn't throw that away if they get a new communication system. It is not for the apps. It's just for the dedicated devices. Okay. Uh... Oh, and, and for literacy through Unity there, I'm sorry, like my mind is all over the place today. There's a scope and sequence um, form that you can download and take a look at that will show you all of the words for each one of those um, components that are being worked on. You know, so you're going to see it's it's a huge list by the time they get through all three of those components. So between the word wall and making words with letters and making words with icons, it's it's a it's going to be so comprehensive that these students. We had one student. We I took her from a mean length of utterance from 1.5. When she finished literacy through Unity, she was up to making five six word sentences. She was brilliant. And uh, that's that's it. You have answered Woo! all the questions that we have out there. <laughs> Excellent. Uh -huh. You guys, thank you so much for attending. I really appreciate it. And stay in touch and make sure, you know, you can go on Facebook if you have any questions and throw that up to the group or you can reach out to us, uh, contact us, and we will certainly answer any questions that you have. All right. Are we done, Russell? <laughs> Yeah, now it's uh, folks are just posting there. Thank you, awesome webinar, and and now we're at the uh, this is the after the seminar session. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna close this out, guys. You all have a great day. Go wash your hands and stay safe. Bye.